Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Shrak. So today we're doing the 3x3 modular engine comparison. Basically running two experiments here. I've got a test bench with, I believe, eight engines set up. These are the 3x3s, like I said. The first experiment is I'm just running an inline setup, just adding cylinders to see how much you gain in torque and horsepower just by adding one cylinder. So this way I can just see the gains of the horsepower and torque just by adding one cylinder so I can see the difference just adding a cylinder does. This will help you in designing your engine to determine how many cylinders you have compared to how much space you have I guess. The next experiment, these four, is taking eight cylinders and just rearranging them into different shapes to see what the difference is between the different shapes. Here I've got an inline eight which is really kind of weird uh, to have an inline eight uh, but I've got an inline eight just because I want eight cylinders. Uh, here I've got a flat eight kind of like the boxer engine with which is a flat four. Here I've got a V8 kind of tilted at 45 degrees because again I can't orient things at anything other than 90 degrees in this game. And another weird one, kind of an aircraft engine style, I guess, just because it's a different shape. I call it the X8. It's really a plus, but you know, I can't. I mean, a V is 45 degrees off, so the X is 45 degrees off too. I just, it's better than calling a plus eight. It's, it's an X8. I don't know what it's actually called. I'm just calling it an X8. So I've got two cylinders on each side for all four sides. So uh, let's just dive right into the results. Um, so I'll spawn this in. And I've got less dials this time, keep it a little simpler. Just got RPS. The temperature, uh, actually that's an issue. The temperature probe that I had attached to the crankshaft on the one by ones won't apparently attach to the three by threes. I haven't tried the five by fives, but it won't attach to the three by, I mean it'll attach, but it won't get any temperature reading. I'm not sure how that's supposed to work. So I'm just running the temperature off of the cooler here. So the cooler temperature is showing here and it's 10.8. It's really good at cooling these engines. So I've got RPS temperature from the radiator, not the engine block. I've got horsepower calculated from this block and I've got torque. The torque is just straight from the torque meter right here in the back. I've got it on all of these. And of course a clutch to engage the torque meter. This function block just takes the throttle input, divides it by two and sends it to the fuel. So you get two to one air to fuel ratio. And then, you know, cooling's a little different for every single one. One complaint I have is this pump. The inlet is on the engine block side. So you always have to put it so that it's facing, it's, so that it's on the side of the engine. It's not really an issue unless you're running an X8, like way over here. Because as you can see here, uh, no matter which angle I have, I don't have space towards the engine block. So what I had to do here is I had to run a separate pump. So that's the only complaint I have with these belt driven pumps is that the inlet should be like I don't know on the side like that one's on the bottom that's fine put one on the side or the top or I don't know so that you don't have to run piping backwards like this and so that if you want a cylinder right here you don't have to delete this pump and have an, an external pump you can still use the belt driven pump that way uh, that's my only complaint yeah it's fired up again I've got all my controls from just here I've got the starter throttle which is a dial so I can easily control it and the clutch just to engage it or not okay so I will set everything to 0.15 because that's going to max all the RPMs or all the engines RPMs are going to max out at 0.15 throttle anyway. Fire it up. Everything's running. Engage the clutch. Yeah, so that's another thing. Uh, these starters, where's the starter? These starters are not very powerful. So on the bigger engines, you've got to start doubling up on your starters. So I've got a couple starters on this one. And then by the time I get over here, I just add like, I have six starters on each of these just to make sure it gets started. So anyway, going through the result, RPS is 56.9. Here's the horsepower is 22.1, 34 torques. That's just one cylinder. With two cylinders, you almost double the torque and you almost double the horsepower. You have a lot of diminishing returns here. Again, not almost doubling the torque. This is three cylinders, not almost doubling the horsepower. It's kind of 50% gains on this one. And I'm running out of fuel. These things suck gas like no other. I'll uh, respawn this. So this one, how much fuel do I have? I still have a little fuel here. Or 115 torques and 79 horsepower. So you can see that you start losing some of your benefit. It's approximately 18, 19 horsepower gain per cylinder and about 27 torque gain per cylinder. So I'll respawn it for these four because they just ran out of gas. These four, again, are just showing eight cylinders in different orientations. I'll show you the results here. So let me spawn that in. I need to just increase my fuel tanks here because these drain the gas at even an eighth throttle here. Starter. 
Just make sure those get started. Engage the clutch. Okay, so inline eight. It's a beast of a motor. 223 torques, 112.9. It'll get up to 9.5 when it stabilizes horsepower. The flat eight, so four and four, can't see because of the exhaust here, is 163 torque and 96.9 horsepower. Compare that to the last one. So you have the same number of cylinders, you have less torque and less horsepower. The inline eight is very powerful. Here I've got a V8 and I have the exact same results. The RPS is 52, oh yeah, the inline, the RPS is 44, so it's not a very high revving motor. This one's 52, 52, these are identical. So I, I'm assuming that the orientation doesn't really matter with the 3x3s, just because opposing versus a V, you still have eight cylinders acting on four crankshafts, and these just ran out of fuel. So let me respawn this again. All right, here we go. Spawning it in. Okay, again, these two are identical. And then I've got the X8. Moving on to the X8, you've got 133 torques and 87 horsepower at 57 RPMs. Again, the cooler is doing a great job at keeping all these cool. It doesn't really overheat. Don't forget your manifolds. That's one reason that these engines will not work. You gotta have the manifolds connecting them if the cylinders are not all in a line. If they're not touching, you gotta connect these ports with manifolds. So don't forget to do that if your engine isn't working. Yeah, essentially that and the fact that I had to add my own fluid pump. Oh, you know what? Oh yeah, I've got a reservoir, cooling reservoir, and this just ran out of fuel. So don't forget your own fluid pump because the belt-driven pump won't fit on this engine. And don't forget your manifolds. So the inline, one cylinder, two cylinder, three cylinder, and four, you have at 56.93 Revolutions per second, you have 34 torques and 22.11 horsepower. You move on to two cylinders, you get a little bit more revs. You get 61 torques and 42 horsepower. That's a difference of 27 torques and a difference of 19.89 horsepower. You add another cylinder, you get 60.14 RPS. You get 88 torques, again, a difference of 27 more than just by adding a cylinder, you get 27 more torques. And you get 60.33 horsepower, which is a difference, you add a cylinder, you don't gain 19.89 like you do from going from 1 to 2. Going 2 to 3, you gain 18.33 horsepower. So it's not linear, but it's pretty close to linear. If you add a fourth cylinder, you again still have the same 60.14 RPS, and I didn't move on to 6. Well, I guess I do have 6 or 8. When you add 8 cylinders, this is essentially the same motor. Add 8 cylinders, you get 44.34 RPS, and you get a big bump here. I'll just extend this down to see what the differences. So that's just the delta. So with the four cylinder you have 115 torques, 79 horsepower. Again 27 torques extra and 18.67 horsepower extra over three cylinders. So almost linear. By the time you keep adding you keep gaining 27 horsepower. Let's see 108 over 4 is 27. So you keep gaining 27 horsepower or torques per cylinder just a flat linear line there. With this, let's see, equals that over four. You can see a lot of diminishing returns, not 100% present there, but by the time you get up to eight cylinders, you can see that you've only gained 8.5 horsepower per cylinder by the time you get up to eight over four. So you can see that adding cylinders is good for torque. It's not necessarily good for horsepower. It also kills your revolutions per second. And then just changing the shape, apparently the I the inline is the best shape you can have in terms of torque and horsepower because the more you have divided up your cylinders and it doesn't matter the shape because the flat eight and the V8 are pretty much identical. But the more you divide it up, like taking four cylinders on each side and, and dividing that into two cylinders on all four sides, like the X8, you can see you start losing, you gain RPS, but you start losing torque and losing horsepower. So hopefully that helps you design some of your engines in Stormworks. These are the three by threes again. And also don't forget your manifolds. The manifolds are crucial unless you have all of the requirements, fuel, air, cooling, and exhaust on each side. If you just connect the manifold, it'll share everything. Um, it, the engine won't work. It won't push empty cylinders very easily. If you don't have a manifold connected, you've got to connect your manifold or you've got to connect your cylinders with manifolds. So don't forget to do that. Also, my complaint is on the cooling pump that's belt driven, just the way it's designed with the, the inlet coming towards the engine block. It's a dumb design. Make it come out the top or the front or I don't know, somewhere else. That way you don't have to add your own 
fluid pump when you don't have space for it. Anyway, I hope that designs hope that helps you design your engines in Stormworks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below. Uh, I'm Shrek. I'll see you next time.